Etiquette by W.S. Gilbert The Ballyshannon foundered off the coast of Caribou and down in Thullam's many went the captain and the crew down with the owner's greedy men who hope of gain a lord or dry the starting tear for they were heavily insured Besides the captain and the cook, the owners and the crew, the passengers were also drowned, excepting only two. Young Peter Gray, who tasted tea for Barker, Croup and Co. And Summers, who from eastern shores imported indigo. These passengers, by reason of their clinging to a mast, upon a desert island were eventually cast, where they hunted for their meals like Alexander Selkirk used. But they could not chat together, they had not been introduced. Though Peter Gray and Summers, that were so certainly in trade, were properly particular about the friends they made, and somehow thus they settled it without a word of mouth, that Grey should take the northern half while Summers took the south. On Peter's portion, oysters grew, a delicacy rare. Oysters were a delicacy that Peter couldn't bear. On Summers' side lay turtle on the shingle lying thick which summons couldn't eat because they always made him sick. Grey gnashed his teeth in envy when he saw a mighty store of turtle unmolested on his fellow creature's shore. The oysters at his feet aside impatiently he shoved for turtle and his mother were the only things he loved. Summers sighed in sorrow as he settled in the south, for the thought of Peter's oysters brought the water to his mouth. He longed to lay himself down on that shelly bed and stuff, for he'd often eaten oysters, but he'd never had enough. How they wished an introduction to each other they had had when on board the Ballyshannon and it nearly drove them mad to think how very friendly with each other they might get if it wasn't for the arbitrary rule of etiquette. One day while out to hunting for the most ridiculous Grey overheard his fellow man soliloquising thus, I wonder how the playmates of my youth are getting on. McConnell, S.B. Walters, Paddy Bile and Robinson. These simple words made Peter as delighted as could be. Oh chummies at the charter house were Robinson and he. He walked straight up to Summers, turned, he turned extremely red, hesitated, hummed and hawed, then cleared his throat and said, I beg your pardon, please forgive me if I seem too bold, but you have breathed a name I knew familiarly of old. You spoke aloud of Robinson. I happened to be by. You know him? Yes, extremely well, allow me, so do I. It was enough, they felt they could more readily get on, for oh, the magic of the fact they each knew Robinson, and Summer's turtles were at Peter's service, quite, and Peter punished Summer's with oyster beds all right. They soon became like brothers with no immunity of wrongs. They told each other little odes and sang each other songs. They told each other anecdotes of disparaging their wives. On several occasions too they saved each other's lives. They felt quite melancholy when they parted for the night and got up in the morning as soon as it was light. 
each other's pleasant company they reckoned so upon, and all because it happened that they each knew Robinson. They lived for several years on that inhospitable shore, but day by day they learned to love each other more and more. Imagine their amazement when, on getting up one day, they saw a frigate anchored in the offing of the bay. To Peter an idea occurred. Suppose we cross the main, so good an opportunity may not occur again. So Summers thought a moment and ejaculated, done. I wonder how my business in the city is getting on. But stay, said Mr. Peter, when in England, as you know, I learnt a living tasting tea for Barker, Croup and Co. I may have been suspended. My employers think me dead. Then come with me, said Summers, and taste indigo instead. But all their plans were shattered in a moment when they found the vessel was a convict ship for Portland outward bound. When a boat came out to meet them, they thought it very kind, but to go on board, they firmly and respectfully declined. The two happy settlers roared with laughter at the joke, until they saw a gentle, manly fellow pulling stroke. T'was Robinson, a convict! in an unbecoming frock, contemned for seven years for misappropriating stock. They laughed no more, for some have thought he had been very rash in knowing one whose friend had misappropriated cash, and Peter thought a silly tack he must have gone upon him waking an acquaintance of a friend of Robinson. They didn't quarrel often, very openly I've heard. They nodded when they met, and now and then exchanged a word. The word grew still and um, uh, wearing, still um, nodding of the head. But when they meet each other, now they cut each other dead. To allocate the island, they agreed by word of mouth, and Gratian still takes the northern half, and Thomas takes the south, and Peter has the oysters which he hates in layers thick, and Summers has the turtle, and it always makes him sick. <laughs>